Hi there, Ty McCarthy here, and I'm making a quick video to show you how to make a couple different spectral indices using ArcGIS Pro. In particular, I'm going to be focusing on the NDSI, or the Normalized Different Snow Index, to look at recent Landsat 8 and Landsat 9 imagery covering the central Sierra Nevada region, so we can look at this recent snowfall that we've been experiencing. Uh, right now, the Sierra Nevada, uh, as of March 2023, is experiencing some of the highest snowpack levels since the 1980s, um, so the last 40 years. And so this lab is, uh, or this video is designed to show you how to make a spectral index so you can make snow uh, the most apparent feature on the landscape like you're seeing in this index here. So here we go. All right, now to give you a little bit more background on what the normalized different snow index is, I've pulled up this USGS website that gives you a ton of information on this index. So it not only tells you what bands in particular are used to create the NDSI, but it also gives you examples of what the output of this index will look like with satellite imagery. And here it's showing you Landsat 8 surface reflectance on the left and the NDSI from negative one to positive one um, on the right. Now, every index that you can do with satellite imagery will give you values between negative one and positive one. Typically, the feature that you're looking for or the, um, the land cover type that is more prominent in the index is going to be a positive value, right, in between 0.5 and 1. Um, and in this case, right, that's snow cover and negative values are going to be other types of land covers, right? So it allows you to differentiate between land covers that you're trying to remove from the imagery and land cover that you're trying to make more prominent or appear um, on the image. So in Landsat 8.9, which is what we're going to be using in this video, uh, band 3 represents the green band, and band 6 represents short wave infrared 1 band, right? So you can see the formula here that you need when you're using Landsat 8 and Landsat 9 imagery. We're going to be using that formula in just a moment when we bring in the Landsat data into ArcGIS Pro. Okay, so now we're going to download a specific scene covering the central Sierra Nevada region in California so we can run this NDSI in ArcGIS Pro. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search here in a feature uh, name for Tuolumne County in California. Once you select this, it should pan the map to that area. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on the Tuolumne County area. And now you could do this anywhere you'd like, but for this exercise, I'm focusing on this specific region. I'm going to use the map coordinates for the search radius or search area. I'm going to search within the last month. Uh, that's when we've received most of the snowfall so, uh, so far this year. So that's between February 8th and March 8th. Of 2023. I'm going to adjust the cloud cover to about 30% so that we can avoid images that are covered with clouds. Now in the data sets tab, I'm just going to select uh, Landsat Collection 2 Level 2, 8 and Landsat 8 and 9, as well as Landsat 2 Level 1, Landsat 8 and 9. And then I should be ready to hit results and see what we can get. Now the scene that I'm going to use for this lab is going to be this particular scene. It covers about half of Tuolumne County um, and some of some other southern counties. So it's path 42, row 34. And I'm going to download the entire product bundle right here. Once you've got that, you can decompress that zipped folder, and then you're ready to bring in the data into ArcGIS Pro. Once you've got the Landsat data in your project folder, you've decompressed it, and you're ready to bring it in to ArcGIS Pro. Now, I've connected it to the folder in my catalog, and here's the Landsat 8 scene that we're going to be working with. What's really great about Landsat 8 and Landsat 9 data is that if you download the entire product bundle through the USGS Earth Explorer, you not only get all the spectral bands 
You also get a pre-made composite or multi-band, multi-spectral image that you can use to create spectral indices. So if you open up this folder, you'll notice that you have the individual bands, right? Here's band one, two, three, four, and so on. But you also have this uh, file on the top, or it could be at the bottom as well, but it looks like it has a raster tile and a little satellite over it, right? It ends with MTL. If you open that up, you actually have some pre-made composite images. We're going to be bringing in the multi-band image into our map view. So if you just drag and drop that in, then you're gonna have a scene that looks like this in your map. You'll see that it's got band one, two, and three currently being used to, to render the image. Um, you could change that if you'd like, right? You could select um, raster layer here and change the band combination uh, to natural color. Right, natural color for Landsat 8 and 9 is 4 for the red band, 3 for the green band, and 2 for the blue band. And we'll just call this nat color and, and add that. All right, so if you wanted to render it uh, in natural color, you could. This is what it would look like, something like this. Um, but what I actually want to do, right, uh, is, is focus on the index. So I'm going to have this image selected in my table of contents. Select the imagery tab from up top. And if you scroll under tools, you'll see this drop down for indices. So these are multiband images that emphasize specific phenomenon or land cover. We're looking for the NDSI. So if you open that up, you'll see the NDSI right here. We're going to click on that. And then we have to plug in what two bands the NDSI uses, right, spectral bands, in order to create this index. Uh, from looking at that USGS site that I had open earlier, we know that we're using band three, the green band, and band six, which is the short wave infrared one band. Right, so if you can refer to the website that I showed you, and you can also just Google things like this, right, what band combination creates the normalized different snow index for Landsat eight or nine, and you'll find that it's band three and six. Once we hit OK, it should only take a few moments for the index to pop up in our map. And there it is. So what I'm going to do once this loads, is I'm going to turn off the multi-band image. I don't need that on anymore. And here is our NDSI. You can see that the lowest values are negative 0.74, and the highest values are 0 0.79. So that means, right, most of the high values between 0 0.4, 0 0.5, all the way up to 0 0.79, those are going to be the values in this index that are snow cover. Everything below that will be other types of land cover. Um, now, we want to symbolize this so that snow is even more apparent. Right now it's white. Um, but you can change it, right? So what I'm going to do is right-click on the layer, open up the layer symbology, and I'm actually going to create a custom color scheme to make snow really pop out. I'm going to leave the low values as black, but I'm going to change the upper values uh, to be more of like a cyan blue color. And in fact, I'm instead of even selecting it, I actually just went to uh, Google, searched for the cyan color code, the hex number, right? I'm going to paste that in and hit OK. There's the color I want snow to be as and here we go so here is the ndsi in arcgis pro um, it's colorized or symbolized um, with a specific color scheme so that snow is very very apparent you can zoom in and see right that this specific land cover or phenomenon is now the most prevalent or easily identifiable uh, land cover in the scene now you could do this with other spectral indices just as simply, right? You can bring that multi-band image in, drop down the indices option here under tools, and you'll be able to uh, select any index that you'd like, as long as you have the proper formula, and you can create it as simple as that. All right, I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.